For my final video pre-Lightfall, I'm going to run some damage simulations to try and get a good idea of how the hierarchy for DPS weapons will look like in Lightfall. I'll be running these via graphing calculator as usual, so these will be conducted in ideal scenarios, and assume that you're landing all of your shots. In essence, I'll break up each DPS rotation into stages, where each stage represents some action that you're doing. For example, for an Izzy rocket swap combo, it may be broken up into the following stages. Fire Izzy, reload Izzy, swap and fire rocket, and then swap back to Izzy. Each stage will be tested in-game for time and damage, and will be placed into a DPS over time function. I'll then integrate these functions over time to produce the normal damage versus time graph for each damage setup. All numbers will be scaled as specified by the buffs and nerfs in the Season 20 Weapon Tuning Preview, so these numbers will not be accurate until Lightfall launches. This video will be pretty math-heavy runtime-wise, so if you'd like to just skip straight to the damage graph and figure out what the best weapons are, skip to the timestamp on screen. But without further ado, here's my testing methodology. I'll be setting all DPS phases up as piecewise functions, representing the DPS at certain given times. This will help to keep our numbers accurate, since it'll accurately include swap times, reload times, and recovery times. These functions will also be periodic, so you can calculate total damage numbers for any time value. I'll integrate these over time to get a graph of total damage over time. As stated before, all numbers will be scaled as specified by the buffs and nerfs in the Season 20 Weapon Tuning Preview, so these numbers will not be accurate until Lightfall launches. Font of Might will also be factored in as well. The new Font of Might is going to be extremely easy to activate with Super Orbs, and will be self-contained by just picking up orbs, so it'll be extremely consistent and work on pretty much all damage phases, since one-off supers like Well will generate those orbs. All we know for percentages is that one stack will be 10%, and three will be 22. As such, we'll be using the following rules, assuming that two stacks of Font of Might is equal to a 16% buff, halfway between 10 and 22. If we're using one, two, or three weapons of the same element, we'll just put all font stacks into that element. If we're using two weapons with different element types, we'll put two stacks in the higher DPS weapon and one on the lower. If we're using three of different elements, we'll use one of each element. And if we have three in which two are the same and one is different, we'll do one stack on the lower and two on the higher. In order to factor in handling and reload speed buffs like Luna Factions are on your mark, since it can significantly affect DPS for combos that include a lot of swapping, I'll be including damage curves for each weapon set using on your mark under a buff label. We'll go over how to differentiate these in a bit. Also, I won't be showing the footage of my testing directly in this video to keep it short and concise, but I'll post a Google Drive full of all my labeled testing clips if you'd like to verify my numbers in the description, and you can view all of the inner works of the calculations on the Desmos sheet. First off, we're going to quickly talk about the Desmos sheet so you can see the curves for yourself or modify them if you want to try something different. Upon opening the sheet, you'll see a bunch of folders. On top, there are a bunch of folders just labeled internal. These folders hold the internal information for each weapon set, like damage and rate of fire, and keep it separate from the actual functions that control the curve's color and other visual characteristics, just to make it more user-friendly for those who just want to make graphs. As for the separate functions on the bottom, scrolling down will show you a bunch of folders with the total damage functions inside of them for each specified DPS strategy. If you click the little unhide button to the left of the folder, it'll show the curve. Desmos could take a little while to render the curve, since it has to do numerical integration to do so, so please just be patient with it. When you first open the sheet, none of them will be loaded. This is intentional to not lag people's computers on first launch, but you can save a copy of the sheet if you like to mess with it. If you have multiple curves on the page, click on one, and it'll highlight the current equation being shown. If you'd like to change the color of the curves, open up the folder in question and hold left click on the little colored circle to the left of the equation, which will open a menu to let you change the visuals. Next, we're going to talk about the internal folders, starting with variables. There are four major types of variables, damage, rate of fire, total timing, and stages. There are also subscripts I use to differentiate these variables. Damage variables are denoted by a capital D and represent a single shot's worth of damage for some weapon. Rate of fire variables are denoted by a capital R and represent the shots fired per second by some weapon. Total timing variables are denoted by a capital T and represent the time it takes to complete a full damage rotation. And finally, stage variables are denoted by a capital S and represent the amount of time it takes to complete certain stages of the damage phase, which are displayed somewhere nearby in text. These variables will all have subscripts attached to them to denote what they represent. The first number of the subscript is always the ID number for the folder. After that, you'll see either a number or a letter denoting specific characteristics of the thing being modeled. For example, D with a subscript of 8S would mean a quantity belonging to internal folder 8, representing something starting with S. The first time a variable is defined in the sheet, the name is explained. For example, in this sheet, D of 8S is explained as being the damage of a sniper shot. In the event that there's a third thing, it'll oftentimes be either B or U. These two things represent buffed and unbuffed states. Oftentimes, this is used for stage variables to denote stages whose speed are affected by on your mark. In general, the internal folders are arranged as follows. First, the damage per shot for each weapon is defined, followed by the rate of fire. The stages of the DPS rotation will then be described in plain text, and then each stage will be timed and tested in game and defined as stage variables. Next, the full DPS per second function will be constructed with the previously defined values. 
Finally, this DPS per second function will be integrated in the normal folders at the bottom of the sheet, which spits out the normal damage versus time graph that's easy to interpret. I wouldn't really recommend messing with the internal folders unless you're really curious, because it can get a bit confusing if you don't fully understand how they work. Anyway, let's just get to the hierarchy. Since most of these weapons have mostly periodic damage phases, I'm just going to make my hierarchy based off of a 15 second damage phase, but the graphs will show the phase out to any damage phase time, so please feel free to check for yourself, although I highly doubt it'll change anything as far as rankings go. I'll show two hierarchies, one being the unbuffed one, and the other one being the buffed one, where I used on your mark to increase your handling speed and reload speed. In order for the unbuffed hierarchy, it goes Legend of Acrius, Wendigo and Cloud Strike swapping with Explosive Light, Explosive Light Rocket Izzy swapping, Anarchy Double Slugs, Sleeper, Arc Rocket swapping with Cloud Strike, Wendigo with Cascade Point Auto Loader and Cloud Strike swaps, Anarchy with a 4th times Firing Line Sniper, Type In with Triple Tap and Firing Line, Retrofit Escapade with 4th times on Target Lock, Cataclysmic Witherward swapping, and Cataclysmic Izzy swapping. There are some things you should know about this hierarchy first. First of all, number two, Wendigo and Cloud Strike swapping assumes that you have infinite stacks of explosive light, so you'll need to be fed constant orbs for this to work. As such, it may not be the most practical to use unless you can get that to happen. Also, Cataclysmic is calculated with all three font stacks on the Cataclysmic because it ended up being better than splitting them up like we usually do. You can check the sheet for the non catastack version if you'd like to see how it compares. Next, let's go over the buffed weapons. In the order with the buff to swap speed and reload speed, it goes Easy Rocket with Explosive Light, Legend of Acrius, Wendigo with Explosive Light Cloud Strike Swaps, Anarchy Double Slug, Sleeper Simulant, Arc Rocket and Cloud Strike Swapping, Wendigo with Cascade Autoloader and Cloud Strike, Typen, Cataclysmic Wither Horde, Anarchy plus Sniper, and Retrofit with 4th times the charm and target lock. The same things as said above about certain weapon types remains in effect here, so Explosive Light Wendigo will probably have the same problem as above unless you can get a ton of orbs. Next, I'm going to go ahead and get a quick rundown about the top 3 rotations for each category in the event that you haven't used them before. First up, we'll go over Acrius. There's actually a trick to using Acrius. You want to melee the boss, and then hold Fire button and spam the Reload button. What this will do is activate Trench Barrel, then Fire, then cancel the pump with a reload animation, allowing you to fire at the max rate of fire while also reloading at the same time, making you effectively have an infinite magazine size. And next season, you'll want 3 stacks of Arc Surge on your leg armor for this. Just make sure to melee every 3 shots, and you'll do fine. Next, we'll go over the Izzy Rocket Swap combo. You'll want to have a Rocket Launcher with Auto Loading Holster and Explosive Light or Lasting Impression, and Izanagi Spartan. Essentially, you'll just be firing Izzy and then immediately reloading by holding your reload button while you shoot. Once you see the bullet go into the magazine, you swap to the rocket, fire, swap back to Izzy, and repeat. For this, you'll want one kinetic surge and two surges for the element of your rocket launcher. Lastly, the Wendigo and Cloud Strike swapping. This one's extremely similar to Izzy Rocket. You just want to fire out all 10 shots of your Cloud Strike, then press reload, and the moment you see the ammo go into the magazine, you swap to Wendigo and fire out all of your ammo, and then swap back to allow auto loader to work. And for this, you'll want three arc surges. Feel free to ask questions in the comments or request some DPS testing for something that might end up being good. Most of the things I ended up cutting out this round of testing was stuff that just didn't have a very good chance at shaking up the meta like Thunderlord. Overall, for day one, I'd bring in Acrius and an Izzy Rocket setup. Izzy Rocket is probably going to be your main workhorse, but Acrius will absolutely melt through close range bosses. If you're able to generate an insane amount of orbs next season, please feel free to bring in the Explosive Light Wendigo loadout. Now, in the event that you have only your heavy slot open in this build, Sleeper is also a great option. Again, if you've got any questions, please leave them in the comments or join my Discord, whose link is in the description. I typically respond to app messages much more consistently than DMs, so please send them that way. I probably won't have any videos out for a week or more, and if I do make any, there'll probably be some possible updates in my Stasis build, as well as a new Broodweaver build, so stay tuned for those. If you plan on running my Shadebinder build in Lightfall, I'd recommend joining my Discord in the description, because they'll probably be the first to hear of any changes to it. That's all I've got, so good luck in Lightfall, and take it easy for the next day and a half.